what is it about the strategic investor initiative that you see brings to bear these points of leverage to move those trillions of dollars that you're absolutely right need to be moved? It's a great question. When I peel back the layers of the onion a little bit and I realize, aha, I understand immediately, immediately why it has value because it is a network and it's a tribe, a tribe of CEOs that have common value and, and the value is the thing that's so compelling about CCP. That's why it was formed. But it's part of the ecosystem or the constellation of actors that all need to bring some sort of effort to bear to move this forward. I, that's what, why I, at first, as I expressed, found sort of skeptical, but then I realized immediately and then the quality of the work as we've gone along has, again, proven itself to be uh, immensely valuable. We see this group as early adopters of something that can be, that can not only be good for the world, but also will make it so the kind of work and the kind of approach each of the CEOs in this is room and, and beyond has will actually be valued by the market in a much more robust way. The message was also very deliberately made that we encourage long-term thinking and that's what we want to see companies demonstrate. And if they can demonstrate governance that supports long-term performance, even if it's unconventional governance, they should count on our support. We wove in the message around environmental, social and governance factors, and I agree there's too much jargon and you could call it what you like. When we actually talk to companies, we talk about this as operational excellence because there's a lot of loaded language in this space, but in any case, that's, that's a side issue. As a long-term investor, they're not non-financial. They're materially financial over time. But if you're talking about the aspects of running your business on a day-to-day -day basis, a year-to-year -year basis, a decade-to-decade -decade business, that also have an environmental and social dimension, it's very clear that these are value drivers or value destroyers if you're not doing it well. I think you're talking about something that we call the equity holder's ethic, which is that an equity holder by tradition, I don't know if this is so much the case, um, tries to protect the enterprise so it can grow, so it can live to fight another day. You know, a consumer or a buyer, you know, tries to exploit it. Uh, and it's the job of the board and the stockholders to protect it so they can, their stock will rise in value and they can you know, eventually sell it on the market or do whatever. And I think that is at the heart of, it, it's a kind of an investor habit that needs to be restored. Uh, and, and if we change our, our investment policies and the way we <clears throat> think about these, these relationships, I think that that gets at that issue. My sense is that the SAI is meant to uh, hopefully be a bit of that um, bridging function between uh, the investors and the corporates. And, and that's, I think, from Bloomberg's perspective, what's, what's most exciting. Why we're participating in this initiative, um, it's largely because we're a very firm believer in practitioners bringing about the change they want to see in the market. We're very enthusiastic about this because when you bring company practitioners on sustainability, governance, reporting, and leadership together with investor representatives, with academics who have proven track record in this area, then you hone down on the key points that really are going to make a difference and you focus on that. Because I think that's what we've got to do is really focus. And so we need management to tell us what time frame they are setting their strategy by and then tell us what milestones they're setting so we can hold them accountable to that. You know, another component of it is if companies set out their long-term plan and then report against that and say, okay, the market dynamic has shifted, we have to pivot a little bit, we're not going to be upset about that because we're clear where they were trying to get to and we fully understand that plans are plans. Planning's important, plans are useless, as somebody once said. Um, and in that sense, that the more short-term reporting, such as quarterly reporting, which you know may or may not be useful, the jury's out, I think, um, that becomes a sort of health check against the long-term strategy rather than the focal point of your reporting cycle. And what we're, in effect, really doing is we're funding translators. We're, we're funding multilinguists, people who understand how to talk to BlackRock, who understand how to talk to Ford, and how to understand how to talk to government. That's a, that's a rare breed. So what we're trying to do is be catalytic to that. 
Now, how that then translates into markets moving, that's the ultimate test. But I actually think there are forces of nature that are moving the markets in and of themselves. The question is, are they moving in the right way with the right values? Because the worst thing that we see in this shift is that the power is still held by a few and, and the benefits only accrue to those that have that power. Are those benefits accruing to everybody? The biggest risk and the thing that's most likely to lead it not to be successful is to only talk to the people who already get it. And too many of these kind of organizations do that. But I think the other contradiction um, in this is, yes, we need to take the big picture um, into account, but change really happens by individual conversations. And this is one of the reasons we never talk to companies about what they're doing about climate change. Because you get into this massive conversation about whether the science is right, whether the government should move fast, blah, 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 blah. So what we talk about is, how are you adapting to a low carbon economy? How efficient a user are you of carbon inputs in your process? So on and so on and so on. Um, and I think that's what we have to be alert to. Trying to change the minds of people who are deeply skeptical about this by proving that this is an investment issue, it's a business issue, it's an operational issue. It is not a social or political one. Yeah, I don't think this is a problem just for SII. I think this is a problem and a risk for everyone. But the the translation of short-term quarterly uh, focus to a medium and longer-term view around sort of systemic risks, of which you know we're focused a lot on climate change, uh, is really going to be that conversation that I think SII can either help to catalyze and, and frame, uh, and lots of other folks as well, uh, or we're just going to miss the, the the window of opportunity. I think SII is well positioned to help you know translate between multiple audiences. This is not a headline grabbing kind of thing. This is a very gradual bringing people on side, explaining the issues type of discussion. This is a moment for kind of radical common sense. That's the way we like to think about it at Heron. Uh, that it's not, it's not exotic. It's good management and common sense.